In this video, we're going to learn how to insert a new line of text at a specific line number in a file and shift down the remaining lines of content. We'll use C++ to solve this problem. So in this file here, we have four lines. If we wanted to insert a new line of text called new line at line two, that would look like this. We would have new line at line two and the remaining lines of text would be shifted down by one. If then we wanted to insert another line at line one called another line, it would then look like this. We would have another line here. We'll also allow the program to insert a new line at the very end of the file. So right now, this file has six lines in it. So we'll allow the program to insert a line at line seven. Let's implement this now in C++. So we'll save this file. And then over here, we'll create our implementation. And the way we'll solve this problem is by first reading all of the content in the file into a vector, where each line in the file is going to be an element in the vector. Then we'll write the lines of content stored in the vector back to the file, except we'll insert the new line at the correct line number. So the first thing we'll do is include the vector library so we can create a vector. We'll also include the fstream library so we can use the ifstream and ofstream object types to read from and write to the file. Then down here, we'll declare a string variable called file name to store the file name of the file to open We'll declare a string variable called new line to store the new line of text. We'll declare an int variable called write line number. And this variable is going to store the line number where that new line of text is going to be inserted. Then we'll prompt the user for the file name, the new line of text, and the line number. So we'll have cout and then file name colon to prompt the user to enter the file name. And we'll use getLine with cin and file name to store the entered file name into the file name string variable. So getLine is a function that's going to read a line of input and store it into file name. Because we have cin as the first argument here, it's going to read that line of input from what's called standard input, which is essentially the shell or the terminal here. Then we'll prompt the user to enter the new line. So we'll have C out and then new line colon. And again, we'll use get line. We'll have get line and C in and new line to store the new line of text into the new line variable. Then we'll prompt the user to enter the line number with C out and line number colon. And we'll use C in and write line number to store the entered number into write line number. Then we'll open the file. So we'll have if stream and in file. So first we're declaring an if stream object because we first want to read the content from the file. Next, we'll call the open member function of the if stream object to open the file. We'll pass it the file name that the user entered. Now it could happen that the file fails to open. We can check for that using the fail member function. So if in file dot fail returns true, that means the file failed to open. In that case, we'll exit the program with an error message and status. We'll have here C out and error opening file followed by and in line, and we'll return one to exit the program. Now returning one instead of returning zero is a signal to the shell or the terminal here that our program was not successful. Next, we'll declare a vector to store strings. This vector is going to store each line in our file as an element. We'll call this vector contents. We'll also declare a string variable called line to store each line of the file. Then we'll read each line of the file. We'll have here 
while not in file dot eof. So the eof member function is going to return true once we have reached the end of this file. So, so long as we have not reached the end of this file, we're going to continue this loop. And in this loop, we're going to use the getLine function to read the next line in the file. We'll have here getLine, and then in file, and line. And this time, we're using the getLine function to read from the file. And we'll store that next line in the file into the line variable. Then we'll push that string onto the vector. So we'll have contents dot push back and then line to push that string onto the vector. Then we can close our access to the file. So we'll have here in file dot close. Because once this loop has read each line in the file and stored it into the vector, we're now done reading from the file. We now want to write the lines back to the file, but we want to insert our new line. So next, we'll declare an OFStream object called outfile, because this time we want to write to the file. We'll open the file again. So I'll have here outfile.open and file name to open the file again, but this time for writing. Now, when we open the file for writing like this, it's going to make the file blank. So whatever we write to the file is going to become the new contents of the file. We'll check to see if the file failed to open. And if it did, we'll exit with an error message and status. So we'll have here, if outfile.fail is true, that means the file failed to open. And in that case, we'll output here, error opening file, followed by an end line. And again, we're going to return one to signal that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we can write the content to the file. We'll declare an int variable called current line, and we'll initialize it to one. And current line is going to keep track of the current line of the file. We'll declare a bool variable called wrote to file, which is going to keep track of whether we've written the line to the file that we're inserting. We'll initialize it to false, and we'll set it to true when we do write that line to the file. Then we'll have a for loop to loop through our lines that are stored in our vector, and we'll write those back to the file. So we'll have here for, and then auto file line colon contents. So this for loop is going to run for each string in our vector called contents. And each time the for loop runs, file line is going to be set to the next string in that vector. We'll write it back to the file. We'll have here out file and we'll output that line back to the file. And we'll increment current line because we have written another line to the file. Now every line in the file, except for the last line in the file, has a new line character that ends the line. So at the end of line one here, there's a new line character, backslash n, that we can't see. What we need to do is end each line in the file except for the last line with a new line character. We'll do that here. We'll have here if the current line is less than the number of elements in the vector as given by contents.size, that means this line is not the last line in the file. In that case, we're going to output here and end line in other words, a new line, to end that line with a new line character. Now, if the current line is equal to write line number, this means we found the line where we want to insert our new line. In that case, we'll write our new line to the file. We'll have here out file, 
and then the new line, followed by an end line, and we'll set wrote to file to true in this case. So this if statement here is going to be responsible for writing that new line to the file once we've reached the correct line number. Now it's possible that the user wants to write the line to the very end of the file. We'll check for that at the end of this for loop. So once the for loop is done, we'll have here if write line number is equal to current line. So once this for loop is done, current line is going to be set to the line number one past the current end of the file. If write line number is equal to that line number, we'll actually write the line there. So we'll have here out file and then end line to end the old last line with a new line character. Then we'll write the new line at the very end of the file. So I have here out file and then new line. And we'll set wrote to file equal to true. Now, if the new line was never written to the file, that means the write line number must have been beyond the end of the file by more than one line number. In that case, we'll output an error message. We'll have here if not wrote to file, then we'll put here line number not in file, followed by an end line. Then we can close our output file. So we'll have here out file dot close. Then we'll save our program and we'll compile it. Oops, I have an error here. So up here where it says out file, what we want to output is file line, not file name. So I'll change that to file line, save the program and compile it. And we'll run it. Now for the file name, we'll enter in file.txt. For the new line, I'll have here new line one. For the line number, I'll enter in three. And we can see the text new line one has been inserted into the file at line number three. And the remaining lines in the file have been shifted down by one. So this is how we can insert a new line into a file and shift down the remaining lines with C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.